Hello. Hey, everybody. Great to see you here. Hello to everybody in the chat. Look at you. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome as well to our members that we have in the chat today or that are watching. Great to see you. Thank you so much for that support. There is a link in the description of the video in case you have a cell phone, not a cell phone, in case you have an iPhone and you don't see the join button on the channel. There will always be a link in the description of the videos for that as well. Thank you so much for being here. Big thank you to my mods this morning. Nancy is here. Dip Me in Glitter is even here and my Tony. So I think we have the full ensemble here, which is fantastic because we have a lot to cover. I'm Natalie, and this is Scientology Life After a Cult, where I recap the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing, share about my 35 years in Scientology, leaving with three generations of my family. And I also do interviews throughout the week. So when you hit that subscribe button, ding, hit that notification button as well, so that you hopefully get a notification when I do these interviews. We had to reschedule one from yesterday, and it does seem that this afternoon around 3 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to be doing an interview with Scientology Audit, Streets LA, William Goode. Hope you can make that. We're looking good on the timing for, for today. Would love it if you guys would hit that like button on your way in as well to help us get those notifications out so people know that we're here and we are going live. I appreciate your support and all of your help in that so much. I also, before we jump in here, I want to thank all of you who have been jumping into the merch store and buying up the SPTV Never In Scientology, but here, but all in to bring down the cult merch. I cannot wait to start seeing pictures of you guys wearing it and doing your thing. I'm so excited about this. I cannot even tell you. There's a link down below if you want to see it. I'm super excited about it. I love it. I want to create more stuff like that. So let me know your ideas. Thank you as well to everybody who's been emailing me, Natalie at lifeafteracult.com, sending me clips, sending me videos with timestamps, articles, all the good stuff, letting me know your thoughts on things because my content, what we talk about on the channel is heavily driven by what you guys think. What has you buzzing? So let's get into some stuff here first. Not that you guys do not already know this, but I want to make sure you know there will be a description, a link in the description always to the SPTV Foundation where people can go to get help leaving Scientology, where they can go to get support with that. And if you're interested in volunteering as well, there should be a button up on there somewhere. Maybe it's on the, I think that's the our team. So if you go to the main page and you just play around with it there, you will learn more about it. You can see here how you can help. Uh, if you need help, how to apply for that, support, contact, phone number, all the good stuff. Really simple, really straightforward. So please remember that, share that, get the word out about it. Part of what we're covering today, I got a lot of links and clips to look at of protesters sharing that information, which is fantastic. Julie Ellsbecker, thank you so much before, for becoming a new member of the channel. Hip, hip, hooray. So appreciate that. All right. So we covered the website. We know what's happening. Did we do our housekeeping? I think we did. Let's get into some clips here. We got a uh, a fun one coming from Jessica Palmadessa, who protests in Los Angeles in Hollywood. Jessica was one of the first people on the scene at the Hollywood Testing Center after William Goode had been out there protesting Scientology and raising awareness about Scientology's recruitment tactics. And Jessica was out the other day doing a video. And it, it you know what? You just got to see it. You got to see it to understand. It just was a little fun run in and interaction, and she just made a little uh, a little clip about it. Check it out. If I, if I was mayor of this town, I would make it so buses are extinct. And there will also be a tracker on every single person. So I would make it so that they had to walk a certain speed or else they get ticketed for reckless walking. All I know is that there would be a $5,000 fine if they walk too slow. Are you, Daddy? Oh, oh. Like, are you gonna thank you? Yeah, come on, come on. See, she would get a $5,000 ticket. You know, watch her. Oh, that's Mindy. That was Mindy. I'm like, she would get a $5,000 ticket. It was Mindy. That's so funny. You see Jessica's car driving there. She's live streaming. Mindy was live streaming. And Jessica just so happened to be talking about what she would do with these slow walkers if she were mayor. She was walking too slow. Now Mindy's going to jail. If I was mayor... 
Ah, <laughs> uh, just thought it was funny. Funny and cute. Funny and cute. What is not cute is this next thing we're going to talk about here. So Danny Masterson is in prison where he belongs. But apparently the story here is that he is, Danny Masterson is using that 70s show fame and Scientology to his advantage in prison. I mean, I guess, of course he would, right? I mean, if you're in prison, you want to use all the tools you have available to you. I just find it interesting. Let's see here. Let's look. Well, basically, he's talking about how on March 13th, Danny Masterson celebrated his 48th birthday behind bars at the California Men's Colony in San Luis Obispo, California. Days later, his estranged wife, Bijou Phillips, was spotted visiting the convicted rapist for the first time, along with their 10-year-old daughter, Fianna. I think it's pronounced Fianna. Okay. While the 43-year-old looked grim as she entered the prison, sources exclusively tell In Touch, Danny has been using his fame to ease his way at the minimum security facility. Danny's a popular celebrity in prison, explains an insider. Inmates know him from that 70s show, and he knows how to use that to his advantage. And despite being booted from Scientology after his conviction, sidebar, do we do we really know? I'd like was he actually declared? I heard that was a rumor. I don't know, but let's go with it. And despite being booted from Scientology after his conviction, he's been using the controversial religion's teachings to his advantage. As a longtime Scientologist, he's learned the ways of manipulation and control, says the insider. The word is he has people protecting him there. The guards are good to him and he's putting together his own squad. He'll need it as he's been sentenced 30 years to life. They're just words that I just cannot use that I want to say and I cannot say them. One, because we're so early in the video, I probably shouldn't have said one of them. But what in the world? Here's the thing. Danny Masterson, as far as I know, didn't even like, he did not do a ton of Scientology. He pretty much, he was raised in Scientology and I feel like took the worst of it, which is most of it. <laughs> the manipulation, the things like that. I, he's a good example of, I think, when Scientology can align with your values or it can not align with your values. So how you use those tools and I think this is true of things even outside Scientology. How you use those tools has more to do with who you are. Like winning the lottery. They say you win the lottery, right? You still could lose all your money. It just depends on who you are. It amplifies. It amplifies it one way or the other. And I think that we are well aware of what Scientology is amplified within Danny Masterson. And I believe that... I don't know about today, but I think for a long time he believed, and he might still today, that he really didn't do anything wrong, that he was entitled to what he did. And that kind of thinking comes from a lot of things in Scientology that would back that up. So just saying that, just saying that. Whoa, whole Diana, thank you so much for be, for becoming a new member. Hip Hip Array to you. And Jamzilla, Hip Hip Array, love that name. Thank you for becoming a member and thank you for your support. Blow drill. Good to see you in the chat, Dylan. I know I saw you slide by. You're right. This right here. All the good things in Scientology were plagiarized. That is a fact. People often ask me, well, you know, did you get anything from Scientology? There are things and games that I did have within Scientology, but guess what I found out? Those were universal truths available outside Scientology faster cheaper and more accurately. So what blow drill is saying here is absolutely true. The things that people do actually gain from in Scientology are taken from other places because they're universal truths. It's like gravity. You cannot believe in it all you want, but it's still going to hold you down. Still going to have an effect on you. And I think that, uh, I think it's like that. All right. So enough of that criminal. Let's move on to what I think is Scotland. Absolute audits. This uh, got sent to me. It's from a few months ago, but a Scientology staff member tries to claim there are no aliens in Scientology. And I found this very, very interesting because this is something that comes up. It's a question that I know I get a lot even today, although I, th I think that people know so much more. And I am not just talking about aliens from the perspective of the Xenu story, right? L. Ron Hubbard in multiple lectures, in multiple places, in not materials that are confidential, 
in courses that an everyday Scientologist could do. Talks about aliens. So this person either is just like completely staying away from it or she's not done any actual courses in Scientology or training to know. But more than likely, she's giving what in Scientology is called an acceptable truth, a sure story, because this is how, you know, this is how they handled it. This is how they handle it. All right. Remember, hit that like, hit that like button as you're coming in. I know I see a few comments. People didn't get notifications and we're told it's supposed to help. So let's try that out. Smash, smash, smash. Meanwhile, let's take a look at this, which uh, let's see. Yeah, that sign back there says Scotland. He was writing science fiction. And she's answering the question about why people ask about Scientology and aliens. Why is there such an association between Scientology and aliens? Oh. Just as a writer, which is very much separate from this yeah. sort of life research. So people are mixing them up, maybe. They're mixing them up. So there's so. no aliens. There's no aliens. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Oh, that's disappointing. I know. I know. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Like, no, unfortunately. <laughs> Is it, do you get a lot of people coming in and asking weird questions? Um, or do you no. think my questions are weird? No, I because <laughs> I understand there's so much misinformation out there. Yeah. That unless people do ask the questions, mm. you, you'd never know because, and you know, people do come in and they're like, oh, you know what, I don't want to offend you, but I heard yeah. this. And I'm like, well, I don't, you can't offend me because I know it's not true. That's what I'm trying to be careful about what I ask you. <laughs> That's fine. That's because I don't, wanna, I don't want to say anything that makes you think that I'm some like, conspiracy theorist. Or, um, That's fine. Or I don't want to make you uncomfortable. You um, no. Isn't that interesting? It's just, it's so many places in Scientology. Why not just say, you know what? Some people believe there's such things as aliens. Some don't. L. Ron Hubbard has written a little bit about it. I mean, just be honest about it because that is the honest truth about it. Just cracks me up. It just cracks me up how they the, they respond or fail to respond. Liz Ferris, thank you so much for donating five memberships for the channel. Too sweet. Great to have you here this morning, by the way. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, you guys tell me about, you know what? I would love to hear, especially the, I want to hear, tell me what you guys think. Both my ex-Scientology friends and my never-in friends. Would you be put off? Would would a talk of aliens in books or lectures by Elman Hubbard be any worse or better? That is not the strangest thing in Scientology. That's why when I often get asked, what was it like when you saw the Xenu materials? I'm like, by then it wasn't the weirdest thing that I've heard, seen, or experienced in Scientology. And I always wonder, would it make that much of a difference for people? For me, I'd be more curious about it because I'm curious about the topic. We live in a very vast universe and then some. To think that we're the only people here, the only conscious creatures here around, I think, I don't think that's correct. Um, but it's always interesting to me how Scientologists and Scientology has chosen to handle that question, despite how much L. Ron Hubbard did talk about it. I don't think it's the way L. Ron Hubbard presented it to be, but uh, I think it's a conversation worth having, and I just don't understand why they don't just answer it more honestly. Now, let's go look at Utology. Utology does these mashup videos, which are really neat because they're it's, it's artistic, it's impactful. This one's on the DOA, Defender of Ants, on some of the swatting incidents that uh, that Scotty has experienced and been the victim of, frankly. So let's take a look at this. This is Utology. We're just going to look at a snippet of it. DOA must walk backwards towards the officer with arms raised. Hey! The whole time, the LAPD is pointing their guns directly at DOA. He must follow the instructions and lie down on the road. The road is not closed or secured by the LAPD. And reconstruction surgery on my knees. Hey, don't move. This is crazy. You know who I am. You know who I am. This is crazy. The LAPD knows who DOA is. The LAPD had several interactions with him. It's not a weapon. DOA is an activist who lives in his van and has been protesting against Scientology for weeks. Job, 
LAPD found no weapons, but held DOA in handcuffs. That's uh, it's just so interesting. The whole video goes into a couple an, another time, too, of a swatting incident. So links down below to all the videos we're talking about. Please do check it out. Doc, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Uh, and quickly here, Kim, Kim McNeil, who is in Canada. Can I possibly get a shout out about Cult of Scientology Toronto's LRH birthday protest for tomorrow? Check my community page at Scientology underscore is my ruin. Toronto and area folks come join us. So yes, if you are around there, around Toronto, go check it out. Nancy, when you have a minute, could you throw up a link to her channel into the chat so people can see it there? But absolutely, Kim. And please uh, send me some clips from the day as well. I'll, I'll check it out myself. But uh, shoot me an email, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Timestamps and clips are appreciated. But yeah, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Utol Utology. Utology. I just like the name and I love what they do. All right. Over at uh, the Blue Buildings, let's talk about a little protesting news in Los Angeles. Selfless Self was there along with many others. And he's going around the Blue Buildings and comes across... A little poopy dog and a couple of what I think are Sea Org members. And there's an, it's probably somebody who lives in the area who's letting their dog do their thing. What did he stumble upon where the Scientologist slash Sea Org members saying, hey, don't let your dog poopy here? I don't know. Hard to tell what was happening. But regardless, it was a strange interaction. So let's take a look at it. Oh, no, it's not Sean, but it's a couple besuited individuals late at night. You know. This can't possibly be real. Oh, yes, good evening. Oh, yeah, you better be out of here, I guess. You know, wow, now you're on candid camera. So you're harassing the citizenry, I guess, perhaps, about like a little doggy doo doo, little doggy dumpers. You're the doggy do police, I think, now. Woo, 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 you pulled over the guy and his dog. Woo, woo, woo. I hope you feel very big, very, very powerful. Tray four. Tray four, guys. Good one on you. Hope you're proud. I don't know if they had to cut their walk short on account of selfless self, but they would have and gone back into the building what are they doing out there that late, too, if it was in the evening? So many questions. So many questions. <laughs> Wohol, Diana, thank you so much for that super chat. Natalie, I don't know if there's a button to click, but there's there's channels that give iPhone users to join and give memberships. You might want to look, look into it. I used it last night on another channel. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. There's channels that give iPhone users to join and give memberships. There are There is a link for iPhone users in the description of this video to do a channel membership, if, if that's what you mean. But I appreciate it nonetheless. Thank you so much for that. And uh, Nancy, thanks for sharing the link. I think you shared it in the chat as well for Kim McNeil. There we go. That's awesome. Head over there. At Scientology underscore is my ruin. If you could make it, well, you should just go over there and show her some love. But she is doing a protest tomorrow in Toronto. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. Hey, Catherine Miller, I'm glad you're catching a live here. Love it, love it, love it. All right, let's take a look at, okay, you guys remember we saw a video not that long ago from Vice where the ex-Scientologist, you know, because you know on Vice how they do those videos, you wear the mask, you're all covered, you can't really, they dis, they disguise the person's voice. For whatever reason, the one they did on Scientology, I'm so glad that they did it, but it was kind of difficult to understand and hear, and I felt, I felt not fully satisfied with that, but there's an article. I found an article that's about it with a little bit more information. And this is from Vice, How I Escaped the Church of Scientology. I found myself working over 80 hours a week and earning under 5000 a year. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. That is accurate. This is a picture of Scientology in Los Angeles. But it sounds like this ex-member who escaped did so from... The UK, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, but let's take a look at this. 
When it comes to the Church of Scientology, you've most likely heard about both its celebrity followers and its wacky ideas about space battles. For example, Lord Xenu, the intergalactic warrior, you can only get the full scoop on once. You you can only get the full scoop on once you've climbed a paywall, of course, m- worth many thousands of dollars. Honestly, people, sometimes hundreds of thousands, depending on how much security checking and interrogations you need. You've likely heard a lot less, however, about the employees of the church who can be forced to work incredibly long hours for a tiny wage. For the most recent episode of Vice's Informer series, series, we spoke to an anonymous former employee who spent years teaching people courses and assisting in the church. Maybe this person, it sounds like they might have been a course room supervisor. The man joined in his mid-20s after reading a book about Dianetics, Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard's pseudo-scientific theory about the relationship between the human mind and body. He then reached out to the church of to the church and was encouraged to come in for a free personality test, a common recruitment method for the religion. This we know. I haven't ever heard anything about Scientology before that. I didn't know what a cult was, he told Vice. They told me I was a complete mess and that I needed to do some Scientology courses to sort myself out. Doesn't that sound familiar, right? Isn't that like one of the main tactics? Scientology will show you how your life is complete and utter horse crap and only Scientology can help with it. A few months after first getting involved with Scientology, he was pressured into becoming part of of the workforce. They spent some time trying to recruit me to join them. I wasn't initially planning to do that. They basically wore me down. They take me to what they call a recruitment interview and keep me there for hours. People, this is a fact. I People will be locked in rooms. We'll have multiple people come in to pressure them and work on them to join staff for Scientology. It is intense. If he refused to sign the paper, they'd hand him some materials to read and leave and come back an hour later to start the process again. It, this is kind of like for me, I mean, there's much, there's a lot of things in this article, but for me, this was one of the main points, this tactic of this, it's, it's kind of similar to an interrogation, except they come in and out. They keep having you read L. Ron Hubbard, read source materials, read L. Ron Hubbard, all backing up how people should be on staff. He finally agreed and signed a two and a half year contract that labeled him a volunteer. So the church wasn't obliged to pay him a minimum wage. They told me I'd be earning 200 a week, which turned out to not be true. (laughs) Big surprise. I found myself working over 80 hours a week and earning under 5,000 a year. At one point, the employee was sent to the Church of Scientology flag service organization in Clearwater, Florida, one of the main hubs for the religion. They send you there to become trained. They consider that place to be the Mecca of Scientology. That is actually what Scientology calls it. He told Vice, once he arrived, they took his passport off him. So he was unable to leave. Alongside a full training and course schedule, he also had to work to make up any shortfalls for his living costs. This is the work study program that we've talked about here on the channel. I did it myself when I was 15 and in a training program for Scientology. If your organization does not pay for your room and board, which they usually don't because they don't have any money, you do this work study program. So he goes on and he talks about that, how he eventually grew disillusioned with the religion. He realized they weren't helping anybody. They were just making money. I didn't think it was right. He kept those concerns to himself to avoid scrutiny, but decided to part ways with the church. But before you leave there, they have you do what they call a security check. And so he goes over and he talks about the security check, you know, how that's done, which uh, we, I interviewed Jenna Miscavige. Was it earlier this week? You guys, I think it was go watch that video, the interrogations and security checks that she underwent from the age of 12 for the next decade will blow your mind, blow your mind. They ask you questions to make sure you haven't done anything you shouldn't have done. You have to see various people. Each one tries to talk you out of leaving and then they put you on the e-meter and they do a confessional on you because they believe that the reason you want to leave is because things you've been, you've been doing bad things. Then if they really can't stop you, they make you sign some things to say, you'll never talk about it. Then you're allowed to leave. It wasn't until about six years later that he understood what happened to him. 
from what I've learned from cult experts, normally a person that joins a cult is a vulnerable, is in a vulnerable position and it could happen to anybody, he told Vice. But he has his own theory too. I think if you're more susceptible to hypnosis, you're more likely to get into a cult. That is very interesting. Although I've heard things to the contrary about that when it comes to the hypnosis, but regardless, just that is exactly what happens. It verifies and backs up so much of what many of us have talked about here. And yeah, so churchy of them. Sign this contract, but you're just a volunteer. That's why we're not going to pay you. No, no, we're not going to pay you. Wait, but I have to sign this contract? Yeah, you have to sign a contract. Well, I have to be here for roll call three times a day, but I'm a volunteer. Yep, you are a religious volunteer. Wait, and if I don't fulfill my contract, I have to pay you for any training I did for my job? Oh, it's not a job. You're a religious volunteer. But yes, we will bill you for all of the training you did for your job here. But it's not a job. You're a religious volunteer. We don't pay you. <laughs> Who wouldn't take that deal? <laughs> and I got to tell you, please remember, it is when you are under the mind control and propaganda of Scientology, you kind of go like, well, I don't know, this doesn't sound totally right. But I mean, I grew up here. These people have my best interest at heart, right? So it should be fine, right? <laughs> it's not. It is not. It is not. Yeah, I know, right? They got to sign the contract and all that. Yeah, Martha, exactly. Prisoners get roll call three times a day. When I was in Scientology, especially when I was in the C organization, it wasn't hitting me that these roll calls, these constant roll calls were to find out who left, who might need to be tracked down, who wasn't there doing their job. It uh, later on, so much of it, like I said, is like, that's why it's so great for those of us who grew up in Scientology and we're in the C organization, we've normalized a lot of the, the, the human rights violations. Not anymore, right? As you strip that away and you let go. But more and more, every week, I swear you guys, especially since I've been here on YouTube, there are things I realize about Scientology that I go, oh my gosh, I really was in a cult. <laughs> you think that I wouldn't still be thinking that, but I totally do when I am. All right. We are going to take a look at Jessica Palmadessa did an interview on Blown for Good. They had her on to share about the protesting and Claire Headley even validated the protests. We're going to take a look at it and then we're going to talk about it. We're just, I'm just sharing a little snippet here. Check it out. Jones, who's um, part of the board of the Aftermath Foundation, when he was there on site putting up the billboard, he had one of the fake squatting incidents happen too. Really? No, I did not know that. Yeah. No, it was, so they arrived on site at four o'clock in the morning. because She's talking about when Phil Jones put the billboard up and some of you might not know this, what, that, what happened to him when he, in the middle of the night because the billboard was supposed to go up between 4 to 8 a.m. And the install crew arrived at 7.55 a.m. Phil had flown in from out of town, so he had a rental car. This guy shows up out of nowhere and starts throwing um, stuff at Phil's rental car, then oh comes God. directly across the street and threw a bottle and a stick at Phil. I did not know that. No, yeah. I did not know that. That's crazy. Yeah, and how crazy is that? I mean, all we all we're doing is putting up a billboard to say, "Hey, do you need help?" I leaving? cannot believe it got taken down. I cannot. I know. Believe it. I know. Like that, that was insane to me. That was insane. Yeah, but. I know. Anyway, like I said, lots more coming. We're still here. We're not. I thought that was interesting about the billboard. I had heard something about that, but I didn't have a way to confirm it. And uh, but yeah, I think that right there confirms it. And. I see your thoughts. Share your thoughts. If you have a question, put question in front. Um, but go ahead and share your thoughts about this in the chat. And if you're joining on the replay, share it in the comments. I do want to say, though, I do think it's great that they had Jessica on. And I hope that they cover more about the protests and acknowledge more about the amazing work that people who are out protesting what they are doing to bring awareness that Scientology is a human trafficking cult that needs to be shut down. So. We will, yes, I, I do. I see your comments. <laughs> Some people felt that Claire wasn't prepared for the interview. Claire's not understanding what swatting is or knows a lot about it. But you know what? I want to take this as a first step that they're trying to cover it, share more about it, maybe get more 
educated on it and what they're doing and have an appreciation for it. It does fly in the face of that blog article that came out by Stephanie Hutchinson. But at this point, I'm not going to get into a lot of it right now. Um, I'm going to do a future video about it. But uh, well, that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm going to do a future video about it probably tomorrow. And we're going to talk more about it. But she was on. They covered it. I think that's a great thing. Get that word out. It is a good thing. Okay, growing up in Scientology, Aaron did a couple of videos yesterday. We're going to focus on, I I love this, Scientology criminals, we are coming for you. That was the name of his video, and we are going to be seeing and hearing more and more about this because here's the deal. There are different people, right, in Scientology that you're involved. You were involved in Scientology in different ways. And some people know more things than other people. Some people were involved in criminal activities more than other people. Some people are still there in Scientology. Some people have left. And at some point, if you were involved in criminal activity within Scientology and you know something that would help law enforcement, you should come forward and share that and make it known. And if you know these things and you're not, I don't know. Just, I feel like we're just going to have something to say about that. <laughs> and uh, more and more of this is going to come out. So let's take a look here at what uh, Aaron was sharing about. Link down below to the few video. This is just a snippet. Check it out. About the very real Scientology crimes um, that can be uh, prosecuted and that would... Um, have a big impact in getting Scientology's tax exempt status revoked. It's a it's a certain type of Scientology criminal. These people are mostly former uh, staff members, former Sea Org members, and I just feel like it's time. I mean, we've done this in the past. I've I've done videos about people like Angie Blankenship, one of the most senior Scientology executives who knows um, about more crimes than probably even Mike Rinder or at least a lot more recent crimes than Mike Rinder. And we're not done with Angie Blankenship, but I figured now that there's so many more voices coming out uh, on YouTube, former Scientologists, former staff members, former Sea Org members, uh, naming names and telling stories, it's time to focus on this particular type of criminal until they realize uh, it's easier to cooperate than it is to keep your mouth shut. That is very true. And there are so many more people, not just coming out who are leaving Scientology, but people who've even left recently and not that long ago, who are now willing to speak out and share what they know. Because a big issue, and I know many people get frustrated, like with everything we know about the abuses and this and that, why is it still being allowed to continue? Why aren't there more investigations? Part of it is because we need they want more recent information. And there are people out who might know more recent information who will hopefully step forward and share those things because either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And there are a lot of this newer information can be very helpful in opening investigations that were once opened before, but lacked more evidence and information. And I think we are at a turning point there. And this is a good thing. It is a good thing. It is a good thing. I know, right? T and Jenny, Aaron not wearing black through me too. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> what is happening? That's right. Cherry SPTV Foundation baked. Well, <laughs> time to cooperate. Boom. <laughs> oh. And I do see, I do see what you guys are seeing here. I see your comments too. Some people feel like it's a good first step for the Aftermath Foundation to share and uh, platform Jessica Palmadessa and acknowledge that the protesters are doing good work. Um, and some of you have other thoughts about it. Some feel that it was a stunt. Um, some feel Sandy Hill says Jessica was unaware of the situation with the aftermath and this was a whitewash or stunt aftermath border out of touch and too culty. Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm not saying I'm, I'm really, I'm like, whatever. I'm not, you know, what, what I, the, the good thing I think in is that it was done and it is a first step. If it's a stunt, fine. It's still a first step in getting the word out and sharing with their audience that these protesters are putting their butts on the line there to raise awareness and bring awareness to Scientology. It's not just the people outside in Los Angeles or Portland or Denver. There, there are the people around there. 
But there are so many more people watching online that are now learning about Scientology. All the time, protesters are having people walk up to them to say, hey, I saw you out here protesting. I've been following the protests in Hollywood. That was their first point of contact. And then they went down the rabbit hole and they became enraged and they started sharing about the abuses in Scientology. That's how a grassroots movement works. That's how the internet works. That's how social media works. That is why it's so important and so valuable. And so we're so thankful that these protests are happening and people are going and doing that. So anything done to spread the word about that and get the news out about it is a good thing. But we shall see. We shall see, right? <laughs> hey, Larry B. Good to see you again. Thank you so much for gifting a membership. Hip, hip, hooray to you. And thank you, my Tony, for reminding people to please hit that like button. Would love it if you hit that subscribe button. I truly appreciate your support and all of your help with that. That's right, Ginger Ostat, oh snap, we still have a common goal and Jess can get the message out too. Yeah, Jessica didn't even know what channel she was on. You hear that at the end of the interview, but it doesn't matter. She's out there getting the word out. She's doing interviews. She will talk to people. She should. She should, and she did. Buckled up, Buttercup. I'm glad Claire interviewed Jessica. There will be people who only watch her channel and who find out. That is exactly my point. It's a whole different type of audience. It's a whole nother audience. And uh, I think we can agree on that for sure. So I'm glad that that's being done. Definitely. Okay, moving on. Speaking of LA and protesters, let's take a look at Dan Walks LA. Dan Walks LA doing his thing out there. I love when he's in front of the parking garage. Uh, he reaches a lot of people. He gets a lot of support. You witness the van tech going on and on. And I love this where he says, we'll be here when you want to get out. Check this out. Appreciate you all. Thank you for the support. Hi, child trafficker. Welcome to the cult. I hope you're proud of yourself. Enjoy. We'll be here when you want to get out. Or maybe your religion will be toast by then. You'll notice when somebody goes in, the van follows not long after. Because what Scientology is doing is when people go into the parking space, they don't, the parking lot there, they don't want them walking out. So they pick them up with the van and then they drive them over the one person. Hopefully there's more, but it looks like they're kind of one twosing it to whichever organization they're going and they're entering in. These could be staff members. They could, these could be Scientology members. Call me. <laughs> love it. Just love it. I love Dan Walks LA. Do you guys, are you guys are familiar with this channel? Tell me in the comments, tell me in the chat. Make sure you subscribe over there because he does, uh, he's doing a great job educating. He had one of the neighbors come up to him and share an experience she had with Scientology that, spoiler alert, it was creepy. <laughs> it creeped her out and she shares it. You can't hear her super, super um, clearly and she has an accent, but Dan reiterates what it is that she is saying. Check it out. So cute. Thank you for the support. And the and the break me here, no? Just been high the eleven eleven midnight in the night. Ten thirty the key. Me and my friend here. I mean, I say, wait, I uh married. I am free here. It's another movie box. They literally tried to keep you captive. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And the Yep. I know I go call the police. You have to be stern with them. It's crazy. No, I couldn't hear my mentally. Wait, this is not natural. Good. No normal. I ought to the nurse in and they ask to everywhere. I know people. I know people. Absolutely. 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 But you have a good sense of when something's wrong and yeah, follow gosh. that intuition. Yeah, yeah it's so cute. <laughs> There are so many stories like this. I swear each time he's out there, we see this happening, that people are coming up to him and 
and sharing about it, what their experience was recently, a while ago. And it's all the same. It was creepy. I felt like I couldn't leave. They held me there. They kept pressuring me. And these are just the new people. It's just the new people. It it blows my mind because I'm like, you know, what happened to easing them in a little bit? Not that we want them to do that, but you see where I'm going with this. It's desperation. The desperation is so strong. The pressure on staff members and C organization members to recruit people for the C org, to recruit people for Scientology is so huge. And with all of these teams of trainees who are firing back to their organizations, like in San Francisco, like in Chicago and elsewhere, their priority is going to be recruiting for Scientology and growing, growing Scientology. So there's not been a better time to have protesters outside of every Scientology organization than now, especially the ones that have opened these new buildings, because they're going to become, they're going to be like full blown on this recruitment. Casey Cat, thank you for the super chat. Skateboard guy made a scary unhinged video yesterday since marked private, threatening Jess in no uncertain terms. Just me and one, our person we're watching. I reached out to Jess and streets, frightening. Well, I'm glad that you told them and made them aware because he does seem to be struggling with some major, major issues. What a creep. What a crappy thing to do. I'm glad you sent that to them and let them know. Eisen, this is a good question. Are Scientologists really not aware how out of touch and creepy they are? It is so weird. Correct. It's the pressure. It's the pressure. The pressure to perform. This is something I think it's misunderstood a lot about Scientology staff members and C organization members. And you guys, especially my ex C org, my ex Scientology friends, and everybody, give me your opinion. Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the comments. This is what I believe to be true. This is my reality about Scientology and Scientologists when it comes to this. The pressure to get their statistics up, to perform, to get the numbers up, to get the numbers up, to get the numbers up is so much more of a priority than actually helping people. They're not, it starts off. They originally joined because they're like, hey, I want to dedicate my life to expanding Scientology because I, I believe that it can create a better world. Why else would you give up going to the movies, time with your family, money, a job? I mean, just so many things that you give up when you join the C organization. You do it out of duty. But then you, at a certain point, the pressure put on you to perform and reach these targets and these numbers are so strong. The punishments used, if you don't meet these targets, are so harsh. It could be cleaning a bathroom with a toothbrush. It could be a denial of food. My daughter was denied food. Other people were in Florida at flag. If they didn't meet sales quotas, that wasn't even her job. They were put on beans and rice. They were denied sleep. They were denied freedoms. They were not allowed to go outside. All because they didn't make these certain targets. So when when Scientologists desperately try to, well, just come in and, and see the movie and see the film. We've seen that at the Hollywood Testing Center. It's so much more because of the pressure of what will happen to them if they don't get their numbers up than it is, I truly believe I want to help this person. Because if they truly believe that, that, hey, I really want to help you, you would back off. You'd let the person take a little bit of information and leave. Not in that moment, you have to buy a book, you have to buy a course and all that. It's that pressure to get the numbers up. It's about statistics, all of that. And you start to lose track of that when you're a staff member and you don't even realize that, hey, I'm so much more focused on numbers and pleasing management that we have we have just jumped the shark on actually helping people or at least trying to, even though what you're trying to help them with is not the most helpful thing, that purpose and desire to help becomes manipulated into a purpose and a desire to please David Miscavige, to please Scientology management, to make the pain stop. Wait, that's in the Sea Org. Trust me when I tell you, it is about making the pain stop. Christy. Thank you. <laughs> All right. This was amazing seeing alive. You're such an amaz amazingly per amazing person, and I'm glad you're on board. Thank you. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Anyways, you guys get the point. I don't want to belabor it. 
but I do and I will. Leah and Danny were also out last night at Celebrity Center. And this was great because if you think people in security in this organization don't blow, you're wrong. They do. They do. Planting seeds with the security there can be helpful. It's a little, they're, they're a tougher nut to crack, but I think, you know what, let them know what the phone number is for the SPTV Foundation and where they can get help when they leave. Check this out. I know you guys could see it. Scientology is a cult. I know you guys could see it. The SPTV Foundation could help you get out of Scientology. The phone number is 727-266-5797. I'm a sparkly now. Hey, don't worry. You sparkle. You need a sparkle. <laughs> this is from Leah Stream, and that's Danny. And for one, they're just so cute together. You sparkle. <laughs> he does. Danny does sparkle. Both of them do. So love that. Love that. Love that. Let's take a look. They went around the corner. This is, oh my gosh, I am just, I. you know what, Dylan, if you're still in the chat, you would know. Liz, you would know too. What was what was this called? This right by the horseshoe. What do we call this? I had to go through here like to do get to the laundry and all that. Uh, they would fix cars and stuff out there. There's a word for this area right here and it's just lost on me right now. So if anyone knows, tell me in the chat, tell me in the comments. But they're looking through here and look at that cover up tarp tech that they have covering. That's where you don't see people walk around out here so much. They're in the back. Well, take a look. Need help leaving Scientology. The SP TV Foundation could help you get out. The number 727-266. Five seven nine seven. The website's sptbfoundation.org. It's okay to leave. That was a thing awful. Oh, they're right there. You can see them behind the freaking brown thingy majingi. Yeah, the brown thingy majingi is covering up so you can't see the Sea Org members walking back and forth, but they are. You need the number again. Need help leaving Scientology. The SPTV Foundation could help you. I love that he's sharing the number and sharing it because I got to tell you. I had uh, moments when I was in the Sea Org more than one time where I would have written that number down. If I knew there was help, if I knew there was a resource, that's a big reason why people don't leave. They don't have, some of them don't have ID. They don't have bank accounts. They don't have a car. They don't have family anymore. They need a resource. And whatever can be done to get the word out to Sea Org members and people in Scientology, that there is help if you want to leave is huge because it is a big game changer. Uh, and they, they're going to need to hear it multiple, multiple times because they're not going to trust it either at first. So, yes, but I'm glad that they're doing that. I'm also glad that DOA Defender of Ants was getting out some flyers yesterday. He even created kind of a cool billboard. We're going to look at that. But he created these flyers and is getting them out. But check it out. Leaving Scientology? So did we find a community full of love and acceptance. Search SPTV to hear our stories. Oh, look at that. Even Chris Shelton's on the flyer. Well, he did leave Scientology. He might not be happy about being on the flyer, but he should be because he also left Scientology. Just very cool. I love the flyer tech. I do. I love it so much. I'm glad that he's getting those out because it it's also letting the public know and the people around there and the people who have family members who are in the C organization who are stuck there, trapped there, who they cannot reach. There's help out there. And there are many ways of getting that information out and getting just, I mean, look how much Scientology lost their minds about that billboard. 
Well, that's a great thing about flyers and other things. If they're mobile billboards, there's multiple. Fine, take them down. We'll put them back up. It's not going to stop anything. It's only going to fuel everybody's resolve in doing what they're doing. And that's what we're seeing happening. And we're seeing more people jumping in and protesting. New channels are coming up all the time. And I love sharing them. Natalie at Life After a Cult. Email me. Send me a timestamp, link, clips, all that stuff. I'm going to do what I can to highlight as many of them as we can. And the beauty of it is when you need a break from it, take a break from it. Even you guys watching, right? If you need a break from it, take a break from it. The beauty of this is with so many people coming on, sometimes one person can't make it out in Portland, but two others can, that kind of a thing. And it's not even being coordinated. People are just showing up. They're just showing up. It's, oh, I love this idea. Buckled up buttercup, make magnetic signs for the cars. Oh, I'm going to do that. I want to do that. Hmm. What should my sign say? Tell me in the comments. Tell me in the chat. What should we make on these magnetic signs? I would like to do that. I would like to do that. Okay. Let's take a look. I was saying, I was telling you, there was also like this billboard that DOA was making, which I believe got put up. But this is before it got put up on the wall. But look at how many people do stop to read it. Watch that 70s show. Oh, yeah. I heard a little. Um, you got your Sharpie? Yeah, yeah. I oh, okay. Sharpie. If I had one, oh, wow. you guys are really passionate about this. Were you inside, don't you? No, I wasn't. Uh, I've just been watching them online. Some of, some of them some of them have been. Yeah, like I actually. Uh, and you heard you got jumped in prison. Yeah, yeah. Some of these these are uh, some of the guys that are in prison. It's just so cool. Then he put it up, and even more people saw it when they were walking by. It's just so great. A creative way to do it and get the word out, have it written there, handing out flyers, however you do it, getting that word out. It just completely, completely helps getting that word out. Anybody that's doing anything to get the word out that Scientology is a human trafficking cult and why is a good thing. It is just that simple. Now, Confident Chris was across the street over by the Celebrity Center and he saw something that made him go, what's happening here? I'm going to take a closer look because when the LAPD shows up with Scientology, often shenanigans abound. Uh, in this situation, it, it was pretty quiet, but it still makes you wonder like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Where are they going? Did they change their mind? Were they going to go in and they pulled back out? What's happening? Defending the little Hollywood, the little Hollywood, uh, little Odo. Hey, your lights are off. Officer, oh, and you have a backup light out. Backup light on, plus the officer's lights didn't seem to be on. It was like the lights were off and they were pulling into Scientology and we're like, oh, we were spotted. Pull back, pull back, abort, abort. Hello? Any reason for stopping at the your favorite place? Oh, where are you going? Push up so you gotta go. Okay, that was awkward. <laughs> he's like he's probably looking for a place to go inside. Cause they be telling them where they want him to go in. You remember at the Hollywood location? Uh-huh. They'll be like, oh meet us, look. You gonna circle back? That is true at the Hollywood location. Uh, Scientology is very specific about where they would like the law enforcement to enter and exit from, which is always so interesting. But yeah, lights were off. Nobody home. <laughs> what is happening with that? Right? It was awkward. It was awkward. It had a whole awkward vibe to it. A huge awkward vibe. It really did. Hats off to you collecting their money rent. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, that's funny. Catherine Miller said, touched my heart to see DOA at that copy machine. Aw, that's sweet. That is very sweet. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at uh, Trashy V12 BMW. He had a uh, he had a little short that he made, and I thought what the Scientologist was saying to him was so weird because it sounded like he was trying to like, hey, if you want some better content, try this. Like maybe he was trying to help him out. I don't know. We've seen this guy before too. I just it's interesting to me. So you guys watch this and you tell me, tell me in the chat, tell me in the comments. Does he seem like he's trying to help Trashy? Yeah. You always ask me if I'm doing this, but you never ask. Never. You never ask. What are you doing when you go in there? What are you doing when you go in there? Never mind. That's yeah. bullshit. You, gotta, you, <laughs> you just. This is what, no, I know what I said, but you have to come up with it. I'm not going to feed it to you. Okay, okay, okay. Be interested. You'll get a lot more stuff. I will try. We are interested. No, you're not. You're accusing people. You're telling them to do this and do that. The Scientology, this Scientology. Get into this and you find out more information. I, I will try that, sir. I will try that. I appreciate Thank you. you. The information. Thank you. I totally get what he's saying, and he is actually right. You are more likely to get a Scientologist to converse with you and just let them spill. I keep saying this. If you find yourself in a conversation with a Scientologist, whether you're protesting or not, ask a question, let them answer. Don't speak over them. Don't keep trying to come up with things to say. Let them answer. Just be curious because they will give it all to you. And sometimes listening to themselves say this stuff, they start to go, wait a minute. <laughs> Not always, but let them. Let them communicate. You're more likely to get more information, find out more about it. Now, it could have been he was thinking, because you'd learn more about the great things about Scientology. It could be just like that. But for me, it had a real like, you know, yeah, Mary Reno, you're probably right. He was probably trying to recruit them. But it, but really, he's right. It would get It would get a lot of really good content. It just cracks me up that he told them that. And this guy talks to him, too. But I think that's a key point. Let them talk. Let them talk. Let them, let them, if they want to defend or say, just let them. Few people are very good at letting them do that. Some will get a, a Scientologist talking, but then cut them off. It defeats the whole purpose. The purpose is not to hear your own voice. It's to hear them and let them hear their own voice. Because I can tell you from experience as somebody that even did media for Scientology, when I heard it coming out of my own mouth at times, I was like, wait a minute. I would start to see it. It helped. When, you, when you're put in a position where you feel you need to defend Scientology and you're actually allowed to do it, it really, it really brings up some stuff in your head that makes you go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Many ways to do it. I'm not saying don't also yell, it's a cult and all that stuff. By all means, do it. I'm talking specifically about if you find yourself in more of a one-on-one -on -one situation with a Scientologist and you can ask them questions. Like that first video we saw in Scotland where the guy was in there videoing, asking questions. She was telling all about it. You find out the most interesting information. We saw that in the early days too of the Hollywood Testing Center, the way that, that you find out the recruitment techniques. Oh, Shakira, she finds this very helpful. <laughs> what? No, no, she doesn't. Well, Diana, thank you so much for gifting those memberships. Hip, hip, hooray. What a fun thing to do on a Friday. Yep. It uh, That guy keeps showing up too. I've seen him a couple of times, a couple of times. Oh, yeah, gonna faucet. Make it an open-ended question if you can. Yeah, I like that. That is awesome. Scientology triggers. I have over 200 questions to ask staff on my YouTube. Great idea. So if anybody, if you're protesting and you're out there, you want some questions, go ahead and ask. Day, uh, Jay, uh, Denver Scientology Audit, he does a good job at that too. He's gotten, he's heard some things from some Scientologists. Uh, trashy as well. Chris without a Hellcat was good at doing that. It's, it's just, it's interesting. There's, there's many who've, who've done that and have had some really interesting conversations. Truly, 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 truly. Yep. Cherry SPTV planting those seeds.
That's completely it. And I can tell you as an ex-member, planting the seeds work. It does. In that moment, the brainwashing might come in. You might go in for reprogramming, but it starts to layer on. Look at Tori, Tori Magoo 44. She was handling protesters, putting their ethics in, sent out there to deal with it. What ended up happening? She crossed and she went to the other side. And why? In large part because of the questions that were asked of her with curiosity. So what that Scientologist is saying, it's almost like a cry for help. If you really want to help get Scientologists out of Scientology, He's basically saying, show that you're interested, show interest. And this is a, this is a concept in Scientology and it, it might be outside of Scientology. I only knew about it from the cult. So tell me in the chat or the comments if it's outside of Scientology, but in Scientology, Aron Hubbard really pushes that you should be interested, not interesting. And so it's just kind of part of how, how, how they think. I thought that was so interesting interesting and insightful. I just love it. I love seeing Scientologists in the wild and how they had, how they handle things, how they do. I sin. I agree. I love Tori. I want to be cool like her when I reach your age. Life goals. I'm telling you completely, completely 100%. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look. I think this is St. Louis. Right? L. Ron Liar91 was outside doing some protesting with a, a little dapper Don, COB, chairman of the board. Look at that, David Miscavige representing outside. That looks like a ventriloquist doll, I think, which I love and am creeped out by at the same time. I had one when I was a kid and it was like that too. I loved it, but I was creeped out at the same time. All right, check it out here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Handing out the orders outside on the sidewalk. Looking all, looking all dapper. Looking all dapper in his, in his dark blue suit. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> looking all dapper. Did I see that Farrell Cheryl's here? Farrell Cheryl, I have been meaning to reach out to you because I want to get my hands on those body thetans. I never thought I'd be saying, take my money and give me some body thetans. Farrell Cheryl made those crochet dolls. I made a short about it. We highlighted it in a video. The one of Mike Rinder and Aaron Smith Levin from Growing Up in Scientology had the black shirt and everything. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. I love it. And I'm headed to Florida next month. So hopefully I can get some, but yes, I am going to, I got your contact info. I'm going to reach out to you. So, uh, yes, 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 yes. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to take a look at, uh, speaking of Jay Denver Scientology audit here. This is a short that he did where he's reminding people not to forget about Lisa McPherson. If you are not familiar with her story, by all means, Google it. You will find out everything you need to know how she was held by Scientology for about two weeks and ended up passing away due to complete and utter medical neglect. This is what happens when Scientology goes to save you from the psychiatrist and take you out of a hospital where you should be getting help that you need. Ooh, Farrell, Cheryl. Yes. I'm making yours as we speak. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tell me your Venmo or something too. Just let me know. I will take care of that. But let's take a look at this uh, Denver Scientology audit. Are the RICO charges that um, the leader David Miscavige is facing in court. Have you heard of Lisa McPherson? That was the lady that spent $175,000 and was officially declared clear and died under the care of Scientologists. She was driven past four hospitals so she could be taken to an emergency room that had a Scientologist doctor where she was pronounced deceased. And then the state looked into it. You know what they said? Malpractice of medicine. And you're supporting them still to this day. And I know you know Lisa. Or never forget Lisa. woman was shell shocked are you aware and that's the kind of thing i'm telling you sometimes even though they're not supposed to scientologists get curious and it sits lisa mcpherson why was he talking who was that trust me when i tell you most scientologists don't know especially especially now 
who Lisa McPherson was because it is completely hidden. It is you don't sit down in Scientology and they, they don't be like, hey, let us show you a list of all the members who have passed away or unalive themselves. They don't start with that. They don't. Nancy, Nancy, thank you so much for gifting five Scientolo Scientology Life After Occult memberships. Hip, hip, hooray. Thank you so much. I know people love getting those in the chat. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I love this too. Una the Great, SBTV. We don't lie. We multiply. And remember Kim McNeil? In uh, over in uh, at at Scientology underscore is my ruin is going to be doing a protest in Toronto tomorrow. Definitely uh, see if you can connect with her if you can make it. I will be me myself and I. It's not Zeno and the Body Satans that I have a problem with. It's everything they do in the name of it: the scams, the abuses, the disconnection. Absolutely, and that's kind of my point: is that these it's so driven by the pressure to make money and succeed. It's pushed from the very top of Scientology all the way down. And it started with L. Ron Hubbard. Every single member, every single staff member, every single Sea Org member has a statistic. If it's writing letters, it's writing letters. Letters in, letters out. They keep track of it. The pressure for you to write more letters this week than you did the last week is as strong as the pressure of somebody who say, even is selling services in Scientology. You were kept in a constant state of fight, fight or flight with the emphasis on just kind of just being stuck in the middle, right? When that kicks in, it's paralyzing on, then you get into this panic state and then think, okay, well, what I can do is work and get my statistics up because my value is all dependent upon what I can bring to the group because that's what determines my value, what I can do, what I can bring, what I can produce. And that is manipulated over and over and over again in Scientology. And that desperation for nothing, for nothing, what's going to happen if you don't write more letters than you, you did the week before in Scientology? In reality, nothing but you are led to believe that the world is going to end. Imagine that. Think about your job. Now, some jobs are high pressure. So you, I think a lot of you will kind of know what I'm talking about, but take it to the next level that if you don't do your job, you don't, you don't, uh, whatever, whatever your job is, right? Say you manage an office and whatever the product is that you're supposed to produce is not enough that week. It's not more than it was the week before. No one is going to lock you somewhere, deprive you of food, deprive you of sleep. Say you have to stay up all night cleaning the office with a toothbrush or sleep under your desk. None of that is going to happen because it doesn't matter, except especially on such a small scale. You know, we're still playing the game to grow this channel, which we are. We're actually doing, it's, it's thanks to all of you. It's going well and it's continued to go better. Because we're going to grow the channel. I'm going to, I, there are so many people that I want to collaborate with even outside of the Scientology community, but on this topic. And I know with a larger channel, they will answer my emails eventually. <laughs> so I'm also driven by that. But here's the thing. However long it takes to get there is however long it takes. Whatever. I'm motivated. I'm just like, I'm, but nothing bad is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But it's not, it's very different in Scientology and the C organization. It is that stress that is put on people that many of us still struggle with outside of this, especially people who are in the C organization. You are so overworked and abused that it's that, that, that constant anxiety and stress can go with you onto other things. And you really got to do a lot of work to get to the point where you can remind yourself, the world will not end if I don't get this done. The world will not end because I need to take one day off or whatever it is, a week. I want to go to Hawaii for two weeks and see my family. Whatever it is, right? Many of them really struggle with that. And that's how they control people completely every day, every day, all day. All right, let me make sure here. I told you guys that we're going to do the Scientology Audit Streets LA interview today, 3 p.m. Central Time. Now, I want to tell you guys this. Sometimes the um, once in a while, you'll see I have to move my morning recap by a little bit, depending on some meetings and other things. Uh, sometimes with the interviews too, but we'll... Um, 
You just got to give me that flexibility. And I know that you guys will, but I will keep you posted anytime there's a change, but those kind of things are going to happen from time to time. So check the community tab on my page as well and stay up to date on that. Cause if I do need to reschedule something or change it, I will go ahead and post it there too. Like I said, I'm working on something for probably tomorrow uh, in after the recap. So a lot of fun things coming up. So again, when you hit that subscribe button, or if you've already hit it, check your notification bell and set it to all. Because in theory, these notifications are supposed to go out when I'm doing a live. So let's do it. Let's just try and use it. And please chime in. If you're catching this on the replay, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to know what you think. Answer the questions that we're answering in the chat. You're all you're all participating, and I love the replay crew when you jump on and you do that because I try to get in there and see as many of them as I can and respond when I can because you guys help me so much. I hope you realize that. Your perspectives, your point of views. I can't always get back on email, but I really do try my best to see as much of it as possible. And it really, really helps things. Just can't tell you how much I appreciate you all. Link down below to all the videos we went over. Link to the channel membership. Link to the merch as well. I have been having so much fun with this. And I'm so proud of the SPTV never in Scientology, but all in on ending the cult. And we've got it on sweatshirts and t-shirts. And I'm not sure what else to put it on. So can you guys tell me? Um, and it has to be gear that's available through fourth wall. I would love a zip up hoodie, but it doesn't look like they have one. What else would you like to see that on? Because that seems to be our best seller right now. I try to do different colors, but sometimes they're out of stock. But I'm going to go ahead and add in the colors anyways, and then they'll let you know if it's in stock or not. I just realized that I, I, uh, I just realized a faster way to do that. So I'm going to do that. But I want to hear from you guys. Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the comments. Where else? What other items would you like to see that stuff on? Because I think it's so much fun. I just ordered myself some merch and it's going to be coming. I'm going to have it before. My Tony and I are going to Florida. We're going to Clearwater. We went to Chicago. Was it in last month, I think? And uh, next month, we're going to Clearwater. Going to do some protesting of Scientology. But you know what else we're going to do? We're going to enjoy the beach. We are going to put our feet in the sand. <laughs> we are going to, I'm going to be live streaming every day. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. I'm still going to be doing the daily recap and then some. Because we're going to be there with Aaron from Growing Up in Scientology, Surrounded by Scientology, Cheryl Farrell, Lori Plays, Spit Clearwater, so many other people. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be mid-month in April. You're going to learn more about that. I'm going to keep you guys posted, mostly closer till or when we actually get there. We'll see how that all plays out. But do stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for being here. All of your support means the absolute world to me. Stay up to date on that community page because like I said, if there's changes to the schedule, I will, I'll be putting it there. And Replay Crew, Shout out. Let me know where you're watching from. Tell me your questions and answer the questions that we talk about in the live chat because I do go back and read it and I find it super ultra helpful. I hope you guys all get out. I hope you can catch today's live stream, 3 p.m. Central Time with William Goot, Scientology Audit Streets LA. If not, catch it on the replay. I will talk to you guys soon. Meanwhile, get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day.